Aleluya. God is good. All the time. <laughs> Thank you, Master. Would you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1? If you don't have a Bible, we have some. Don't we? Okay. <laughs> I know we have some. The Word of God is alive and powerful when it's backed by the anointing. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Where's service next week, Friday? Remember, service this Friday is at Okoe Oaks. Yeah, hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 1. Is everybody there? In verse 26, somewhere around there. <laughs> yeah, 26 is good. Would you read it with me, please? For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Now, this is powerful. Because it's according to the ways of the world that, you know, not many mighty, not many wise, not many, you know. In other words, God is not calling the individuals of the world in the area according to their knowledge and ability and intellect and education. So everybody got it. He's calling them from the world because he chooses to call them. Amen. There's something important because so many times um, people say, well, you know, when I, when, when, when I gave my life to the Lord or, or when um, I, I got God in my life. Amen. Well, it, you know, in this, it's, that's really not true because God chose you. You didn't choose him. You know. He chose you, and you didn't choose him. So if you're here today, he handpicked you to be here. You're not here by coincidence. You're handpicked to be here. Amen? Because there's something that God wants to get to you. So when many times people say, yes, well, I have God in my life. Well, I realized something very important because I was corrected on that. And the Lord said to me the other day, he says, it's not that I'm in your life, it's you're in my life. See, and, and many people try to bring God into their life, and it doesn't work. You cannot bring God in your life. It doesn't work. You bring your life into God. That's how it works. Has everybody got it? Why? Because you're getting rid of your life, and you are now going into the life of God. This is where many people falter, fall, backslide, and go back to the world. Because they're trying to bring God into their life, and you can't. Are you listening? You go, your life now is in God. He's not in your life. You're in his. And when you're in his, things are different. They're totally different. See, when people try to bring God into their life, they become religious. There's a difference between relationship and religion. Religion is associated with the rituals. Religion is associated with the areas where people feel good just because they did something. Are you listening? Well, I read my Bible today. I'm a good person. Well, I went to church on Easter and Christmas. Hello. Well, I went to church this week. I feel good. What about the rest of the week? See, there's a difference of God, you living in God's life. God does not live in your life. Amen? That's why he said, give me your life. Why? So you could have his. How many of y'all here want the life of God and not yours? Amen. Amen. See, now you begin to live in another realm. Now you begin to walk according to what he's called you to. Because you cannot have God in your life. You're in his. And if you're not in his, you're not his. Are you listening? 
This is where people get goofy on this religion. They can re memorize the Bible. They can quote scriptures. Are you listening? They're looking for the feeling. They're always living by a feeling. If things aren't feeling good, they always have problems. Why? Because they're not in the life of God. Are you listening? And this is where the Lord is bringing us. He says, you know you're calling. In other words, I called you, he says. You didn't call me. You might have called me, but I allowed something to happen so you would call me. But I already called you before you called me. You just happened to call me because I caused you to call me so I could show up. You know, when people pray, every t when people pray, they say, oh, pray, pray. Yeah, pray for this person. You know what happens when you pray for a person? Usually disasters. Why? Because God's going to get that person into a place where they call on him. Are you listening? Every one of us, somebody's been praying for. And every one of us has gotten to a place where we've said, God. <laughs> Amen? Why? Because somebody's been praying for you. It always causes us to get to a place where we have to look up. Where reality comes, oh man, I really need God. And, and it, it doesn't matter what level it's at. It doesn't matter, you know, you don't have to lose it all to get there. Well, some of us had to. I, number one. But in this, please remember the area that God says. I've given my, my life for yours. That means you give him your life so that you can live in his life, not him in yours. Amen? There's a difference. And in this, the Bible tells us, look at this, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, in verse 27, he said, but God has chosen to what? Foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things are that no flesh should glory in his presence. That no flesh should what? Glory in his presence. So that you can say, I did it. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That, as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Amen. Now I want to share something about where it says, for you see your calling. There's something that you've been called to do. There's a purpose. There's a calling. And in this calling... You have not only been called out of darkness, but there's a purpose why you've been called out of darkness. Well, so you can make it home. Okay, well, that's nice. But there's an area where you've got to work out your salvation to make it home. Amen. You've been called for battle. The calling for battle. That's why you've been called. You have been called out of darkness into his glorious light to become, you've been drafted into the army of the eternal kingdom for battle. Everybody say battle. Yeah. And if you're not in the battle, you will become a casualty. And this is why problems are happening in the body of Christ. This is why there's divorces in the body of Christ. This is why there's all kinds of stuff going on in the body of Christ. You know, people blame everybody else for their stuff, and the problem is, is they just don't battle. They just don't battle. If people will begin to battle, they won't have the problems. It doesn't mean things are going to be easy, because the devil's always going to resist you. Amen? But you're going to get through it. Everyone say, go through it. How many here are going through something? Well, thank God you're going through it. You ain't going to get stuck there, are you? Hallelujah. But you know why people get stuck there? Because they don't battle. They keep calling on the Lord. Lord, help me. Let me tell you, every time you call on him, you know what he does? He sends you to a place to learn so you can battle. 
And if you choose not to battle, you go in that vicious cycle over, over, and over. And you become a casualty every time. And hopefully you won't die in the condition of a backslidden condition. In the outer darkness. So you have been called to battle. Everyone say, I'm called, I'm called to, battle. to battle. Joel chapter 2. Joel. We're going to Joel's place. Joel chapter 2. Hallelujah. You know, think about it. If the body of Christ would battle, we'd be a lot further than where we are. Well, there is a cry to battle right now. And right now there's a call to battle. People cry out. People are crying out all over the world for help. And you know, God sends his people. He still works through his people. Amen? Remember something. The body of Christ has been left here on the earth. Hello. I and mean, if you are the body of Christ, that means you've been called to battle. In Joel chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. For it is at hand, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains. A people come great and strong, the like of whom has never been, nor will there ever be any such after them, even for my many successive generations. A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is like a garden of Eden before them, and behind them are desolate wildernesses. Surely nothing shall escape them. Who's that called to? Us. Us. This is what God sees me and you like. He's just waiting for us to get there, man. He's waiting for us to come out of this arena where we just think that God is in our life and we're supposed to be living in His. Where we'll begin to fulfill that arena as a warrior because there's a battle going on. And there's a call right now tremendously to battle. Tremendously. Go to verse 15. It says what? Blow the trumpet in Zion. We're Zion. Has everybody got it? We're the Zion right now. There's a physical place and a spiritual place, but right now we are Zion. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and nursing babes. Let the bridegroom let the bridegroom, who's the bridegroom? Jesus, go out from his chamber and let the bride from her dressing room, who's the bride? We are. He's saying, come on, let's get out. Let's go. Let's go battle. Yes. Is everybody okay? Let the priests who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord. And do not give your heritage to reproach that the nation should rule over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Where is their God? You know why? Because people are not battling. People, have got, you know what? Let me share something with you. Many people in the body of Christ are asleep. Uh-huh. Church, okay. Tithe, okay. They're not battling. There's not enough battle going on. The body of Christ is to be the sword of the Spirit in this earth. Is everybody okay? There's got to be a battle in your life. If you are not battling, you end up as a casualty every time. And the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. 